Welcome to Meet the Author, where you can join in on insightful conversations with best-selling and award-winning indie published authors. Your hosts today are Rob and Joan, who themselves are indie published authors, book publicists, and paranormal investigators with Tampa Bay Spirits, based in Tampa Bay, Florida. Thanks for dropping by. And now, on with the show. Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Joan. I'm glad that you're here, whether you're viewing us live tonight, Wednesday at 7 p.m., or you're listening to us on a podcast later on tomorrow or next week. We're glad that you're here in the audience, and we're happy to to see you and hear from you. Remember, share, like, comment. We love comments. We do. We like those comments. Mm -hmm. And we need subscribers still on our YouTube YouTube channel. (laughs) So go there and uh, don't be square. Um, We also have our store on IndieBookSource.com. Here's our latest release right here. One of our latest releases, we released a whole bunch of different uh, designs uh, this week. And that's one of them. So tonight we have a extra special treat. Uh, we have a return of um, thriller author Paul Hollis, and he's got a lot to share. And before we bring him in, we're going to let you Welcome, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hello. Howdy, Joan. Thanks for having me back again. You, you didn't really lessen the first time, huh? <laughs> I love that trailer. That's I great. love that trailer, That's... too. I remember when you first did it and we first saw it, we were like, how the heck did you do that? Joe Conjol <laughs> says, hi, Robin Joan. And of course, Paul. Hi, Joe. <laughs> hey, Joe. Glad you're here. Yeah, I am I actually lifted, uh, with permission, lifted a, a segment of of a uh, Spanish movie uh, that actually that uh, portrayed that that incident in in uh, uh, Spanish history. So I took that and and uh, um, and as it turned out, actually, I probably could have been in the film because I was just behind that car on a street to the let's see, off to this side, uh, no, wait, that side. This anyway. I thought uh, I saw you over there. Were <laughs> you wearing a beret? No, but I, um, yeah. if I did, I got it knocked off my head because the, the, <laughs> the explosion was right around the corner. And the only thing that saved me were the brick buildings there because, um, um, because I was trying to get to the guy before he got blown up. And, uh, and even five minutes sooner wouldn't have helped him or me either. But, but anyways, I was blown over the cars that were parked on that street into the, into the street. And, and it took me a, a bit of, of time to get back up and, uh, figure out what was going on but um that actually starts the movie uh, or the the the, um the book really so let's rewind a little bit um for those that haven't seen you before uh why don't you tell us a little bit about you and your background um and 
how this all happened, how you got to that spot and to begin with. Oh, okay. so first of all, Marjorie says Wednesday again already. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Marjorie. Hi, Marjorie. Glad to be here. And then um, George says, oh, lonesome George present and accounted for. Hi, George. Hi, <laughs> lonesome George. George. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Paul. Sorry. So, okay, so I, I was born like David Copperfield, uh, but, <laughs> not, but not in but not in the English Birmingham. I was born a little bit east of Birmingham, Alabama, ah. in, in coal country and farm country down there. Um, and uh, one of my earliest vivid memories was uh, making moonshine with my dad. <laughs> um, that was my first illicit uh, uh, adventure into uh, illegal uh, chemistry. Uh, <laughs> first. Remember that because that'll come back to haunt me. In a, in, in a few years. So uh, what he did though was uh, was interesting. Uh, he actually put it put the moonshine in the car for gasoline so that you so that he never had uh, when he stopped by the cops he never had any gas but had had any things there except in the trunk he had a, a whole rows and rows of uh, mason jars you know so that he could fill them up. So what my job was after helping him ferment the the uh, liquid, let's say, with with a little bit of battery acid, because it makes uh, it makes sugar ferment faster. By the way, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally, totally insane and illegal. So, <laughs> so my job was to crawl under the car, and he had this little little shuttlecock thing that would that you unscrew it, and it opened up a, a little uh, running port, and I would hold a mason jar there and fill it up, and then put it back on and, and cap it up and hand it out to him. He'd sell it for five or $10, whatever it was at the time, um, which was never got caught by the cops. But what happened was, is we had to, uh, he taught me how to reseat uh, valves in an engine because <laughs> the 110, 120, 150 octane, uh, uh, moonshine was was actually burning up the engine. Burning it, right through oh. the engine. <laughs> yeah. So so we had to every every three weeks or month maybe somewhere somewhere around there we had to to take the whole head off the engine and and start sort of rummage around in there clean the clean the uh, the, the black uh, suit out and stuff like that and reseat the reseat the rings and the pistons and back in there. So so um, yeah. James so, Rickard says you're not from coal country unless you're from West Virginia. But yeah, then he yeah. says he's from West Virginia, which we know. And Paul knows more about moonshine than I do. But that's probably because James's dad didn't make moonshine and teach him how to make it, right? <laughs> well, I am. Um, yeah, that was not that was not my choice. I mean, it wasn't not my first educational adventure, but 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 five or ten dollars for a mason <laughs> jar of moonshine that long ago. Uh, not that you're that old. But oh, um, he's been dead for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a lot of money. <laughs> so, well, yeah, it was. Um, Joe it was, says he knows how to drink moonshine. <laughs> yeah, five and ten. Yeah. <laughs> right. that's, that's the North Carolina. Hopefully not with, hopefully not with uh, battery acid in it, though. <laughs> right. So, yeah, no, that, that was not good. But it was uh, but it was workable and people didn't seem to notice and it, at least when they woke up. <laughs> they didn't <laughs> <laughs> What it was. I, I saw a man drink a whole tumbler of, of uh, moonshine once, fall back out of his chair. I mean, I mean, like passed out. And when he came to, uh, his wife said he had been uh, blind for uh, like two weeks before his vision came back to him. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, <laughs> so do. I guess yeah, worth, that. I guess it was worth five dollars experience, but um, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> You got his money's worth, right? <laughs> so, so let me let me jump forward a little bit to the to the nineteen sixties and uh, when I started college, um, I uh, started in the in the fall of nineteen sixty seven, which, as you all know, that that was the uh, beginning of the of the um, hippie revolution kind of thing, uh, and I fell right into the middle of it and it cha sort of changed my uh, uh, life uh, figuratively mentally and all sorts of different ways. Um, I was actually going to be a civil engineer uh, at first, and I was going to, um, you know, build bridges and have my name put on them and, and that, you know, so, but after one semester of, of uh, chemistry and biology and analytic geometry and, and kinetic physics, I knew that the 
only way I was going to have my name on a bridge was to spray paint it on. So, <laughs> so I looked for other opportunities during that first semester, first year. And, uh, and it turned out that chemistry, which I'd had a little run in with when I was five years old, turned out to be a good thing because I was able to distill uh, LSD in the lab. And, uh, oh, my goodness. And I, and I took it down to Chicago and sold it for $500 a half ounce in those days. I was 67, 68. And uh, oh, so my. <laughs> are they yeah. still looking for you in Chicago? No, they were they were nice guys. They, they knew most of them because they were they were uh, Italians <laughs> in Elmwood Park out, out west. You know, if you knew uh, that, you know that area, but we um, do know, yep. Yep, we yep, do yep. know yep. that area very well. And my yeah. brother, I should should probably tell you, is retired ATF. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, there you go. You well, watching, Dave? Don't give him my don't give him my real name. <laughs> I've used, I use probably most of my life I've used more fictitious names than my own name. But uh, so anyways, so so back to college then. Um, I, I spent my uh, first summer of sixty eight. It was the summer of sixty eight after college uh, with the the Democratic uh, National Convention was in Chicago and um, oh yeah, and, uh, I remember so, that. So I hung out with. Uh, Abby Hoffman and Rennie Davis and Jerry Rubin and, and uh, Hayden and, you know, it's like the whole bunch of them. And, um, and, uh, you know, got to sit in a little bit on the, on the, what they call the Chicago seven. And I won't, I won't mm -hmm. get much into that, but, but um, uh, that's a whole hour in itself. Just, yeah. Yeah. I just, looked, <laughs> yeah, I just looked that one up, but, but the next summer um, was my summer of love. I, I went to California that summer in 69 and hung out with people like uh, oh, Carlos Santana and uh, and Grace Slick uh, from Jefferson Airplane and 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 Hope uh, and Garcia, you know. From so, I mean, I, I knew them all back in those days. Jerry and, Garcia, and, yeah, mm -hmm. Deadhead, yeah, and uh, and uh, so so of course, being nineteen in 1969 set me on the road to go to to upstate new york for woodstock so Woodstock's that's sure. where, that's where i went uh, to, to woodstock uh, in uh, august uh, 17th of 1969 so that's where i was for that and um you know it, it the uh, there's no saying i guess it says if you uh, remember the 60s you weren't there you weren't there because <laughs> uh, of the drugs and rock mm -hmm. and roll and maybe some of that stuff but but uh I do remember being 19. I remember being buzzed and wet and and uh, uh, thrilled and hungry and everything all at the, all at the same time and and uh, at Woodstock. And what I don't remember is another time like that. So um, so after that, I sort of moved my major into um, uh, staying out of Vietnam. And that was very popular. In that place. <laughs> yeah. um, I almost got, I almost got a, B, a BS in that. Uh, I get a BS in that. Um, so, um, but but having gone through all that, uh, my father asked me, "Hey, if, after you graduate from college, uh, I, I've been working with the with the feds in Washington, uh, FBI. Do you want to join them?" And I thought, "Oh, you know what? I, I've just spent." four years trying to stay away from carrying a gun and I, maybe I don't want to do that so much really. Right. So I turned that down and I joined the Peace Corps, which I thought was a whole lot more better. Right. I mean, that's absolutely better. Right. So they sent me down to, for training to um, uh, a little place in uh, uh, Eastern Tennessee, which was near the Cumberland Plateau. And you could, it was probably a stone's throw from the lost world of, of uh, West Virginia. So if you can hear that from there. <laughs> but, um, uh, but I thought, well, what did I get into now? I'd rather be shooting people <laughs> than, than digging ditches, right? And so um, so at the first opportunity, I, I got this uh, request that I could go to uh, Eastern Africa, a place, a newly, a newly formed country called Tanzania. Which is, um, if you are a, a jewelry expert, you'll you'll know that that's where Tanzanite. the Tanzanite, Tanzanite comes from, the light blue, the blue thing. But that's all I've ever heard had come from that that was any good. Um, so, so about three weeks into digging ditches in the in 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 the rain, it was it's raining, and I was up to my knees and in mud and and some kind of animal excrement you know just digging digging latrines for these poor people 
And this guy comes along in a, you know, I swear to God, in a white suit, a cream, cream colored, maybe cream colored suit. And he says, hey, I got a better offer for you. It wasn't yeah. Colonel Sanders, was it? No, he, oh, okay. no, he, no, there were no chicken with it. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't <laughs> offer anything that had a chicken. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, so, um, so he's, so I said, well, hell, it sounds better than this. I thought lions and tigers would be better than dinosaurs, but it turns out it wasn't any better. And so he says, hey, you know what? You just travel around Europe. You're, you're on your own until I need you. And, and, and I didn't even hear the rest of the conversation. I said, yes. And, um, and so he, he gave me uh, maybe about a month's training with, uh, with the guys who taught the SEALs, the, the Marine Corps, who taught the, the SEALs how to be SEALs, uh, gave me a, a crash course in me basically staying alive, if I could, uh, in that, and uh, learned, you know, some weapon weapon to weapon combat that not much shooting because i was never really good at that as you as you it, when you read the books you'll my uh my partner will tell you that uh don't trust him with a gun because he can't shoot straight he don't shoot, I don't shoot <laughs> a couple of times. so so anyways i i kind of gravitated to a knife and and uh that's where i uh um ended up with that and i also spent a a couple of weeks in the in the Swiss Alps with the Italian army rangers, uh, mountain rangers that were, were um, sort of up there, up there in um, kind of preparing for, for whatever they do. And, and, and it was like a survival training and, and I, and I had to, uh, you know, eat, uh, cook and eat, catch, cook and eat uh, tarantulas, mm. uh, which uh, I don't ever remember seeing one of those on a, on a uh, European menu. menu, so I don't know how that had to do with anything that I was gonna was at, going to do. But but they put me through that in cold and rainy weather again, etc. So I finally ended up in um, in Europe, and uh, and my job at the time was was that you could go, uh, uh, I could go anywhere I wanted to in Western Europe because the uh, Iron Curtain was pretty stiff over there at the time, and um, uh, and that uh, I could go and do and see and whatever I wanted to all paid for. And if I needed money, I just go to American express office and uh, give them my number and they would give me money. And, uh, and by the way, folks don't try that today. Cause they won't do that <laughs> 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 unless they charge your card for it. Um, but, uh, so I was, um, uh, I was a, you know, kid in the candy store. And then, and then all of a sudden they said, okay, start following these people give me more information on them. We've heard, we've heard um, certain things about these guys. We need to know if it's true. And if that truth is going to come to our shores uh, in U S shores. Um, so I thought, hey, hey, what the hell, you know, that's easier than digging ditch, you know, and, and uh, stuff like that. So, um, so I, I developed my own, own routine. I, I got really, really, really good at disguises. Um, and, uh, you know, used uh, used all the uh, uh, in the seventies. It was like everything was like running water with with disguises. I mean, you you could um, you put on a pair of glasses and people didn't recognize you. You know, because they, they didn't really look at your face, right? They didn't really look at you. And so you you change your gait a little bit. You know, put a rock in your shoe and you and so you, you got a little limp and you're a different person. You you uh, you put a you know you you put a, a beard on kind of thing and and definitely a different person because nobody ever sees you right and, and and that may be some of this some of the days today's i mean it's how how that maybe people react to people but but they just don't really see people and uh and so i was able to to get away with a whole lot of things of different um uh i mean i had hippie dreadlocks in in one of the books and and uh you know the whole the whole uh uh tie-dyed shirts and the thing in in uh dublin that was and and uh nobody cared nobody saw you nobody did anything to you you know so so it was all it was all about that and you know i used shoe polish for 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 um, hair colored dye and and uh, used uh, also coffee grounds works well um and works pretty fast as well and uh so you, you do that and then it's like they don't know who you are you've changed your your whole mo whatever so um so that's how i got to europe to start writing these books and uh so the the guy in the white suit, 
he was from our government, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And would you say CIA? Um, yeah, I would you know, more than say uh, CIA. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. It was not the CN, uh, uh, CIA. It was uh, NSA. Um, NSA. Was, yeah, and he okay, was. Okay, so uh, to be clear, you were a field operative for the NSA, and well, that that clip I that was, we saw really happened to you. I was a contractor for them because right. they would have disavowed me if I had gotten myself killed right away. Well, so, right. they're called well, disposables, as yeah, as I've I mean, been told. and that's that's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. Is is um. Uh, was disposable, but I didn't know that. I was 23 years old. Well, they used to run ads in the paper yep. for young, are you young, like to travel, don't have any family or anything tying you down? Give us a call, you know? Yeah, and yep. I wasn't kidding. My my brother was in the FBI, and uh, he was, this was before the DEA, and he was in the narcotics division. Then he went over to the Treasury Department, and I remember reading that in the paper mm -hmm. one day, and yeah. he said, Oh yeah, we call them disposables. Yeah, he said yeah. we're advertising for young men with no ties, and yeah, you know, I, and if they and, get caught, we don't know who the hell they are, and they're out of excuse anybody, my language. Anybody, anybody with a red shirt, right, it qualifies. So. Yeah, the red shirt. Red shirt. <laughs> so, I did want to say George said his first movie was in Tanzania. Hatari Tan with Tanzanica. no, he was in Tanzania in Hatari with John Wayne. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. And then James Rickard says Clark Kent took off his glasses, curled a lock of hair, and became the Man of Steel. And that's that's true. That is what he did. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. yeah. But that's what you're saying. But I just yeah. want people to understand that when they saw that trailer, that book trailer that we played at the beginning, and that car was blown up, that was real. That was, was real. A real incident. That really, yeah, that was that was real. And and there's. And there's a whole bunch more in that book that was real. It happened in Spain and, and uh, France at that time. So that uh, one is the Hollow Man, right? That's, That's the Hollow Book Man, One, right? right. And uh, so, yeah, at the at the time, um, what was happening was that there was a, a real influx in in, um, in in what I guess what we would call uh, uh, terrorism at the time. It, they um, right. What hap What normally happened before, generally happened, I would say, before the the seventies was that, is that terrorists would go after a specific place or a specific person, you know, a, a political kind of a person or whatever for for this all this ideology. But then, but around that time, they started figuring out, hey, let's just blow the shit out of everybody and uh, and and see what happens and 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 people started taking that a lot more seriously because it's like whoa you just brought that home to us and um and so and the united states was was trying very uh hard for that not to come to the united states and they wanted to stop it in europe at the time so um and they're mostly um uh successful at the time but but yeah what i what i was generally was um a field a, a field contractor more or less because they didn't really recognize me as as anything and they, and they didn't really give me a whole lot of support other than money and so so you just had to do that and it's like oh you did you came up with these great results <laughs> <laughs> let me read what diane said she said i came in late because my writers group ran late sounds like i missed some interesting stories Diane, you've got to watch this. No, watch the first part. It's watch the first part amazing. tomorrow morning. Because, um, <clears throat> yeah, you're not going to believe some of the stories you've missed. Go ahead. And all true, by the way. Just saying. And we're going to have to break pretty soon for a commercial. So if you've got another short um, we are? Thing you want. Yeah, oh pretty soon. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is going fast. Because we've got to get to your second book. Yeah. And then we've got to. And the book giveaway. Give and, the book giveaway. And, and then we have to introduce your third your book. third book too yeah, so yeah. okay so. another quick quick story here uh yeah well okay i mean in in the first <laughs> book another true event is that is that i, I have uh it's probably not too visible on camera here but it i have about an inch and a half scar on my on my palm from a, a knife fight who uh uh who uh, a gentleman French gentleman who uh, caught me in the south of France um, uh, and uh, was not taking no for an answer and and uh, was um, generally um, uh, adamant about killing me and uh, 
But you said, turns out, oh. turns out that my my, res <laughs> my wrestling career in high school saved me because uh. I, was able to, I was able to take him down uh, and uh, kick him in the head a few times and and oh. uh, and ran down the stairs and out the door and, I, and there was a huge big uh, air this was actually on uh, Devil's Island where they had kept uh, the uh, man in the iron mask and and the the guy who theoretically was the uh, king of france or prince of prince to be of france or something like that the man in the iron mask right. anyway um so it was it has it was at that prison kind of thing and and uh, that's and it was like, all has also has other things on the island and and um so i i looked and it was a big open wide space and i thought oh man there's no way i'm gonna run this guy down with my hand <laughs> and everything <laughs> like this and and so i stood by the door waiting for him to come waiting for him to stagger down in that and they and i and i cross kicked him in the in the gut and, and it's like that made him really really mad and and uh, fortunately <laughs> My my partner, who was late at the time because uh, she had just actually finished somebody off in the woods, but but um, she, oh she actually she actually killed this guy to save my life. There, that was the first time she saved my life. Now and, she uh, was MI five or MI six? MI six. Foreign service. Foreign service. Yeah. Foreign so, service. MI five wow. must be at home then. Yeah, they're the home. They're home service. Yeah. Mm. And, okay, that's crazy. Yeah. That's. Crazy. That's amazing. So read yeah. the book, Hollow Man, because you will read all these crazy stories. But not Diane. The first stories that we were talking about, <laughs> you'll have to listen to the podcast right. tomorrow. Joe Conjol says, "What an interesting life." And and George true. Dismuke said it was Tanganyika before it was Tanzania. Uh, so anyway, anyway, let's break for our commercial, commercial if I can find them. And we'll be back in a few minutes. We'll do our book giveaway. We'll talk about two more books and cram it all into the next half hour. So here we go. See you in a minute. We have a special. Hey, look at us. We've got a new store. Yeah, we do. It's pretty exciting. What can you find there? We have a number of designs available on t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, laptop and phone cases, pillows, and new designs are coming in all the time. Sounds like a great place to shop for authors and readers. Yeah, and it's easy to find. It's simple. Just visit IndieBookSource.com, click on the store tab, and you're there. Many secrets are hidden within the darkness of the jungle. Behold, this one about a man, a woman, a black jaguar, and an ancient Maya legend. Two Faces of the Jaguar is a novel by George Dismukes that will take you deep into the jungle and capture your imagination until the last word. Two Faces of the Jaguar is book one of a trilogy Two faces of the jaguar where only the adventurous dare to read. Two faces of the jaguar, the lost city, and the jaguar's quest are available on Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, and many other bookseller websites. Two faces of the jaguar, the book people are talking about. Get your copy today. At Indie Book Source, you can shop by genre or by author, and you will be buying direct from the author's main purchase link. We offer hundreds of titles and formats that include ebooks, paperback, hardbound, and audiobook. Support an indie author. Visit IndieBookSource.com today. WLFE Digital Broadcast Network presents Variety Unlimited Television. Watch shows like Meet the Author Podcast, The Bipolar DM, Just Cindy, Card Pulls and Coffee, Unfiltered Talk with Bryce, and more. That's right, our shows are your shows on WLFE Digital Broadcast Network. And now, back to the show. The IRA had a new weapon, 
the car bomb. It was the perfect way to transport explosives. When it went off, it turned glass and metal into deadly shrapnel. The bombers could park wherever and whenever they liked. The troubles had been raging for three years. Somehow, normal life went on. So that's the trailer for this, London Bridge is Falling Down, which is basically now you're in Ireland in the middle of the Troubles. Right. That all really happened. Yeah, um, actually, there uh, a little uh, note of interest that you, you saw the winding of the of those timers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Those were actually, they, they actually <coughs> took um, the insides of parking meters out, and, uh, and the, those were parking meter timers so they would set them as far as they could two hours or whatever it was and, and they give them plenty of time to go you put it in the car and and um, and park it wherever they wanted to and they walk away so the irish weren't as uh as dumb as the uh as the the guys who do the suicide bombs it's like, <laughs> we're, we're just gonna walk away from this right now <laughs> and so uh and and so we'll live to see the pub another day but uh so yeah, that was it. Was um, it was a very interesting time. It it really um, started in uh, in the UK and in, in uh, London. And um, uh, I don't know if you remember of uh, Princess Anne uh, being uh, almost abducted in the yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I was I was actually there, and I I got her and and her husband Phillips out of the out of the car and put them sent them into the park you know and while this guy was going nutball with the with the driver and, and some other uh pedestrian just walking by and and uh, uh of course and then he he took he had, he had actually shot the the driver who was the bodyguard and and stuff like that but he survived because I, I i put a you know, I, I tore his coat off and put it, you know, put it on his chest to, to stop the, to slow the bleeding down and, and kind of thing is all I could do at the, at the point. But, um, so then, so then I got them out of the back seat and she was not going to come out of the back seat. She was like, no way am I coming out. She actually told the guy, he said, get out of the car and you're coming with me. And she said, <clears throat> Oh no, I'm not. <laughs> and, and so that's what's got him mad. And then some other uh, some other um, passerby came by and, and started tossing threats back and forth between this this guy who was trying to get her out of the car. And uh, and by that time, so I pulled so I pulled the door open and I said, "Come on, come on, come on! You got to come out this way." No, 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 no. I said, "Yes, you do. You have to come out right now. You have to get out and get away from the car." And so finally, they they got out. She, uh, he he got out. Uh, Mark Phillips got out first, and then and then she and and uh, and they said, "I said, stay low in the shadows and just go right." And so by the time that uh, the fighting with the with the other guy was over, um, he he had uh, actually uh, hit cracked him on the head or something. And I don't quite remember, but but then I kind of was going around the back of the car to see if I could help. And he was coming around the front of the car to, and so we ran into each other <laughs> and I pushed him and I started running through the, running back through the park. And, uh, um, and you know how, how people kind of meander along the paths of the park. <laughs> yeah. I, in, in Europe they do, but 
here we don't. And so I just like ran straight like a bullet across this thing. And this, and this guy, is, he's trying to follow the path, you know, to follow me. And and finally he got the idea, though, that I'm just going to run after you. And and so he caught me and we started tangling a little bit. And then the the, the police caught him and took him away. And and um, and I sort of disappeared at, at the end of that. But but that's how the that's how that book starts. There's a, there's a, some explosions and things in that. But but I have to go to. Um, uh, uh, Belfast and, and uh, Dublin to uh, figure things out of why why and who are are bombing. There's a, there's a supposedly a list of of uh, victims and places that that uh, I had to verify if they were correct or not, and and figure out why they were on the list, kind of thing. And uh, that's in the in the the introduction to the book. There's a there's a uh, uh, piece of a poem you know about about five fingers uh, signing a deal basically that that destroyed a destroyed a world and half and destroyed a country and half to half to the world uh, but but that was really what it was all about is this to try to figure out why these guys were doing this and, and what it was and, and it turns out that that was just sort of the decoy with i won't tell you what was really happening then you'll have to get get that out of the book there. you have to read the book Okay. And then I'd like to really bring up this because you did mention your partner now, and this is Surviving Prague, and she's the MI6 operative who partnered with you, and she's in Surviving Prague a lot, which, by the way, people, you can't buy this yet. It's, it's not the out. Next, it's the next one, and he's <laughs> coming, working feverishly on it. He's actually writing it while he's talking. <laughs> 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 he's multitasking. <laughs> yeah, they they do tend to write themselves, don't they? <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> they, if you're a pantser, they do, and yeah. we are. So yeah, <laughs> I have a I have a thousand monkeys over here in the corner. They're all banging around. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Patterson. <laughs> right. So so what happens in this book is that that uh, she uh, and Zita is her is the name I, I gave. Uh, actually, she she offered that name. It's it's her uh, uh, confirmation name for real. Uh, Zita, Z-I-T-A, and it turns out that in Greek it means uh, uh, seeker. Right? So I thought, oh, that'd be a perfect name for her. So, but anyway, she's assigned to, to in, into Prague uh, because um, apparently the communists trusted the British more than they trusted Americans. So we did not have any presence there, mm -hmm. but they did. And so they had a foreign service and, and uh, there were four of them there and they had... Um, uh, the three the three men with her all sort of met a strange death within like three two weeks kind of time frame. One was drowned and one was in a car accident, and I think the other one had a heart attack. And it sort of seemed like okay, maybe that was all you know just to cover, you know. That and they were trying to kill them and to get rid of them so that they did not understand and figure out why what what the um, the uh, committee chairman in Czechoslovakia was actually doing at the time. Um, so, uh, so I, so I heard about this um, uh, and I was, happened to be in Munich at the time, which is like a four hour drive to uh, Czechoslovakia. And, um, and so I put on, put on my usual disguise and the, you know, the little hat and everything and glasses and, and uh, headed for uh, the, the Czechoslovakian border. And, um, Talked my way through uh, without a gun fight immediately, <laughs> but, but within about thirty seconds, there was. It looked like a scene out of the Predator with all the bullets flying and everything. And I had happened, oh to, I happened to be able to hide behind a, a big boulder, so it, it ricocheted all the. Oh, and by the way, I, I stole the car too, so it, it wasn't it was <laughs> helpful too. So. Um, uh, yeah, it, it was uh, one of many cars I had ended up stealing. I, I originally started out uh, doing like they do in the movies, so pulling the dashboard thing down and, and doing the wires that way. And it, it turned out it was a lot easier to uh, uh, to uh, sink a, uh, a flat-nosed screwdriver all, two inches into the, into the uh, key lock, and uh, you just turn it and it starts right up, baby. Wow. Okay. Good so, job. There's a good tip, a DIY tip for. Everybody. I don't. I don't know if you can do that now with. The, I haven't tried it on the on the uh, the cars that have the uh, what those those key fob. Or? Key fob, yeah. 
an not automated, automatic stop. Not the key fobs, but the um, well, the key fob. I don't think it would work on you. No, probably not. not. Yeah. But but the uh, the ones that had the uh, the ionized keys, the, the like, oh yeah, 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 BMWs and all that. I don't think I don't know if it would work on that. But but it worked on BMWs back then, and that happened to be a. I think it was a some kind of a triumph or something. But anyways, I you know it, it was it was on the top of a uh, top of a mountain kind of thing, and and. Uh, so I, I kind of real quick. Trish Pipkin says, "Well, next car she steals, she'll try that." Yeah, make sure it's an old one though, because I don't old cars. Yeah. I don't know if you can do that with a new one now. <laughs> so uh, go ahead. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm, I'm trying to make my way down this uh, hill, and of course, it's or the mountain, and it's uh, it's raining, raining like you've never seen before, like Noah's coming, right? And uh, and and so. I get like halfway down and I swerve into the thing and they're, they're chasing me and, uh, and I, and I back it into a, into a, a crevice between some rocks on the, on the mountainside. And the other side was like a hundred foot drop, you know, sort of thing, basically. And so, uh, so they, so they kind of went, went this way, but, you know, past me and, and, uh, and didn't see me. And, uh, and so they backed up, they didn't turn around and there was no place to turn around. So they backed their, 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 big uh uh gas gas i you know a big uh big machine back up anyways that they were following me in and there were like four or five of them and um and so eventually they just got tired of waiting to see if i was hiding or not and uh and they they just backed all the way back up the hill but and then so in the meantime so then i got into the got back into the stolen car and of course it's been raining like hell and and it had a um, it had a uh, canvas roof up top, and I thought, oh, just, uh, just, okay. So I, I, I pulled it back, and it was, and it, it soaked me, right? And, and it was stuck. Then the car was stuck in the, in the, in this crevice, right? And so I, so I, so I thought, <laughs> oh, oh, you know what? It's, it was a stick shift. So, so all I did was I got behind it. I was gonna push it out. Just, just <laughs> nose it out a little bit, right? This was going. So, so, so. Uh, so I got behind the car and and Im immediately my feet sank up to like halfway up my shins, right? <laughs> and and of course um, I put give it a little push because I thought, well, you know, when when it starts uh, when it starts catching on dry ground or on on the on, on the harder surface, <laughs> it'll die because it's not getting any gas, right? <laughs> no, that's not how it works. So, so I pushed it and it started it took off across the road and, and I was. And I jumped and I was trying to, to chase and get and get this thing and I, and I lost my shoes in this mud, right? So I've got no shoes now, and and I, and I, and I jump and I, and I jump onto the bumper like this and it's and it's and, it's, and I can't stop it. I'm, I'm like mud mud all down my shirt and everything and my face and and I can't stop it and it just goes over the side. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so it took me like all oh, two days to get into Prague itself. Uh, and uh, I, I needed, you know, new clothes. I, I took some trains to get there, and I. So and I met this was the uh, glamorous life of a secret agent. <laughs> yeah, just the like one James, that they have in the movies. Yeah, just like James Bond and, and Jason Bourne, you know, Panther Peter. Oh. Who played on the Pink Panther? Pink Panther. Peter, what was his name? Sellers. Peter, Peter Sellers. Sellers. There it you go. sounds like a Peter Sellers spy thriller. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It didn't. It didn't feel like it at the time, but now it does. I guess. Oh my gosh! Well, now it's you like, can laugh about it, but at the time, I'm sure that was really it's like terrifying. What, what else could go wrong? God damn! How? 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 Why don't people let you break into a country? You know, they they can stop you all they want breaking out of the country, but <laughs> just let you come in. You know, I didn't understand that at all. So, so anyways, I I got in there and and um, and I, and I got uh, it's just it's just a complicated long story but but i um and, and there's a there's a a serial killer who uh who uses knives and uh is is really really crazy um uh, and all that but it, but it all is it, it was all a cover for for bringing in uh uh what we call now dirty bombs uh to uh it made out of cesium uh that would um uh, when exploded would would kind of you know irradiate a certain area maybe a kilometer square or a mile square you know something like that uh not a big thing but if you had five or six of them it was gonna do some damage somewhere so wow. that's what that's well, what that's a whole kilometer is pretty pretty big but 
Robert White says, without the splatterproof suits, the mud would stop the knife blade in the shoes. That's for sure. Hello from Australia. Good Hello. morning, Robert. <laughs> Good morning, Robert. I, never, I never did find those shoes either. They were just buried <laughs> in the mud. They're probably still there. And some <laughs> archaeologist is going to dig them up someday. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wonder, wonder what, what they that were story doing was. there. He's gonna, he's gonna find, they'll find a few dead bodies on that mountainside too, for sure. Oh, yeah, probably. Boy. Yeah. I'm oh, telling boy. you. So the first book, The Home Man, is in Spain? Spain mostly? and France, yeah. Spain and France, mostly. Mm -hmm. And then the second book is in Ireland. Uh, England and Ireland. Yeah. England and Ireland. And then the third book is in Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. Which is now the Czech Republic. And, you know, Czech Republic, right. Split it into two, but... Back right. then, that's why I call it Czechoslovakia. But but yeah, it, it's um ninety nine percent in in there, and, and maybe one percent, two percent in uh, in uh, Munich. Munich, okay. Yeah, that's intense. Well, when do you plan on? Do you think you're going to get the uh, Surviving Prague uh, published? Well, I'm putting the I'm putting the uh, last. 20 pages together the, the last the, the last uh uh what do you call it i don't even know now the episode you know the 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 last the last thing is going to happen i'm putting that together now yeah. and uh and, and then it has to go to the editor so i'm i'm hoping really by christmas or new year's or something in that area but but i know that's a bad time to sell books so uh i may hold it off for a little bit longer James says he ha hates to say this, but he has to leave early. Great stories, Paul. Thank you, James. Bye, James. Appreciate it. Always appreciate it. Yep. Thanks for watching and listening. So, yeah. Epilogue? Did you mean an epilogue or no? Uh, a no. finale. finale. I was just thinking of a finale, yeah. Finale. <laughs> All right. You still have to get the finale done. Yeah. Well, we got about five more minutes. Oh my um, gosh! Seriously, that's yeah. all that we have left. Yeah. Oh well. Are there any comments or questions from all of you there listening that you would like to say? Yeah, I love are questions, you, Paul. I love questions. Yeah. Well, I know your your son has been doing a lot of gymnastics, right? Yes, he has. Yeah. Well, is, that, is that part of his training so that he can <laughs> evade, uh, you know, all the? Uh... No, I, I think he's going to put me back together because he uh, <laughs> he's planning he's planning to be an orthopedic uh, pedi uh, pediatric orthopedist. Ah, oh. okay. But he's had he's had quite success at his gymnastics, though, right? He's like he championship has, stuff, right? Yeah, he has. He's he's won over. Oh. 400, 500 medals. I mean, yeah. I, it's I amazing. Them all. Yeah. He's a, Church he's says a, you need to have Paul on again. Yeah, <laughs> we do. We need to have him on again for yeah, sure. We didn't talk about it, but the book giveaway has been running for the last 20 oh, minutes yeah, or 25 minutes. The book that. giveaway, the first five people us only to email Paul at hollow at the hollow man series.com will each win a sign will each win signed copies of the first two books. Okay, so, so that's U.S. only. That'll be you'll you'll win a copy of um, either the Hollow Man series or um, let me bring Hollow up. Man and no, London Bridge. No, both, London. both of them. Oh, both. Yeah. <gasps> each you'll person each, is going to win. Each person both. wins two books. That's amazing. That is a and, and for any for anyone not in the U.S., I'm happy to send uh, 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 Moby e Moby e copies or you know ebook copies, etc. Okay. Whatever you want. So don't hesitate. Trish yeah. Trish wants to know, she said, she doesn't know if you've mentioned this, but do you speak any foreign languages? Which that's a good question, Trish. Um, I, I used to speak enough to get by in uh, Spanish, French, and Italian, which are all romance languages, all based mm -hmm. on Latin. Uh, and uh, and uh, English is, you know, a little, that's a little trickier. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, I did know enough to in, back in the day to... Uh, to communicate uh, in uh, in Spanish, I wish I had my son then because he's fluent in Spanish. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I I knew enough to get by in there, and uh, not so much in French. I I, I uh, 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 relied on on uh, Zita a lot, my partner, uh, for the French. Uh, but 
it's because of the accents and that I just I couldn't really get a lot of it, but but uh, I got mm -hmm. some of it. And um, uh, I always and and in Czechoslovakia, I I pretended when I was <laughs> when I got caught, I pretended like I was deaf and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> good job. <laughs> Great idea. Marjorie has a good question. Right, she this said, might use up our time. We'll I see. love the use of Hollow Man in the title. Was that meant to be an insight into the main character? And Marjorie, I don't know if you realize. Paul is the main character. He really is that person. He really did do all these things. So yeah, go ahead. Paul. Yeah, it, it is an insight into the main character. It's uh, it's being hollow inside, not understanding a whole lot about what's what the world is like and not what's going on, and and hollow about the the um, uh, the tenuousness of life, you know that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, it's it's all about being a an unruly, you know, 23, 24, 25 year old that, that doesn't know squat from anything and, and uh, doesn't know the meaning of breaks in any situation. Um, and, you know, you're, you're automatically going to live to 30. So I was okay at the time. And that's really what, <laughs> that's really what it was, what it, where the title came from is being the hollow man is just inside. And it also, it also explains a little bit more uh, in the, uh, uh, the the excerpt of a poem from T. S. Eliot, "The Hollow Men," um, and that is that talks about being in disguise and not knowing who people are and what they are and all that sort of thing. And I I did a lot oh. of disguises at the time. Awesome. So again, just to say where we can um, reach you, let me put this up. Paul at the Hollow Man Series dot com. Go there for your books. Mm -hmm. Twitter is at Hollow Man Series. Facebook. The Hollow Man series. So yeah, I have um, and your website reached, too. I just reached uh, eighty-eight thousand, uh, eighty-eight thousand followers on Twitter. If you can believe that. Wow! Yay. Have, Good job. I have, I have fooled a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> You're not hollow anymore. You have eighty-eight thousand followers. <laughs> Well, oh, I'm afraid that's the end that of our podcast. Like, like lemmings off the off the edge of the cliff, right? There you go. <laughs> well, away. I'm gonna I'm gonna push you around a little bit. Thank you so much for joining push us away. again. Push uh, my pleasure. Push I'm away. gonna push you over. this way. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, and I also wanted to say I hope everyone caught George's. Uh, trailer that we had on his yeah his commercial for his yeah, commercial that was, that was brilliant. That was a really good one, wasn't it? He yeah. had a really great voice over artist. Trish says, thank you, Paul. Uh, you're always welcome. Diane says, that's very interesting. Yeah, it was very interesting. Okay, so Crazy. yeah, coming up in November. <laughs> November is next show, episode 31. It's going to be Kaylin McFerrin. She writes psychological thrillers and author Bertie Rivers, who is multi-genre, kind of a fantasy uh Thing horror, there and horror. Fantasy and horror. Yep. Uh, episode 32 on the 10th. Well, that was on November 3rd. On the 10th, we have uh, Lisa, Lisa? Lisa. Lisa. Lisa Sherwood Fabre. And she writes some Sherlock Holmes books. Oh, that should nice. be interesting. And a couple of others. She's a kind of a multi genre too. Orlando Sanchez is going to rejoin us on the 17th uh, with episode 33. He writes Urban Fantasy. And um, episode 34. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving, uh, we'll have Adam Gaffin again, uh, sci-fi author, uh, with hopefully some more news about uh, some new books. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us tonight. Uh, we enjoyed having Paul, and uh, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Until next time. That's all, folks. Thank you for joining us here on Meet the Author. Make sure you stay up to date with our show by clicking like, follow, and share. And you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, and more. See you next time on WLFE-DV.com. You've been listening to WLFE-DV.com, where our shows are your shows.